Hello everyone, in this video we will explore Felix with practical examples and see some of its applications. Felix is one of several implementations of the OSGI specifications. So before we go ahead, if you are not familiar with OSGI, please check the previous video in which I explained what OSGI is and its role in modularizing Java applications. You can find the link to that video in the description below. Alright, Apache Felix is an open source implementation of the OSGI framework. It provides an OSGI compliant framework and runtime environment and offers a set of tools and services to create modular and dynamic Java based systems. Let's go ahead to Apache Felix website and download the framework that we're going to use in this tutorial. Now if we go to felix.apache.org and click on the download section on the left side, you will see the Felix framework distribution hanging out in the middle of the page. Now you have options here. You can use a tar, gzip, or you can grab a zip. In our case, we're going to use the zip and it's easier to use. After it's downloaded and on a Mac, it's automatically unzipped for us, which is right here. So all you need to do is unzip it and move it to a place where you can get access to. In my case, I have moved it to op directory. You will notice inside the framework folder, there is a bin folder with a Felix jar file and this is the jar that we're going to run to start Apache Felix. So let's use the terminal and let's go to that directory where we installed Apache Felix. We can see here we have the bin directory and it's preferable to stay in this directory and from here we will target that specific jar. And we will immediately see Felix prompt. This prompt is like the shell for Apache Felix. You will notice it says gogo, -go, which is the name of the shell. The first command we would normally type in here is help. And you will see there is a whole bunch of commands that can be used. The ones that are here prefixed with Felix, you don't have to write exactly this way. So this is the namespace of Felix and the command bundled with it so you don't have to type the prefix part of it. For instance, we can use the lb command, which lists all bundles that are installed in the system. So you can see the list of all installed bundles and also with its status if active. You can also use help to get help on specific commands. For instance, the install command that we will be using next. As you can see, the install command is very simple it just takes parameters, which can be any number of target URLs. So this means we can install bundles from URLs or file system URIs. Now let's take a look at our project structure. We have three Maven modules, activator, service and client. Each module represents a different aspect of our OSGI application. In the client module, we'll have dependency on the service module, but we will see this more in detail. And of course, you can also find the link to the GitHub repository in the description below. Here I have a multi-module project. This is the parent POM, which serves as a central configuration file for sharing common configurations and dependencies across the modules. And each module's POM will inherit from this parent POM. Here I have the dependencies for OSGI API and the Maven bundle plugin, which is used in the build process for building OSGI bundles. It takes care of generating the OSGI metadata or the manifest files that are required for proper bundle deployment. Now let's go ahead to the first module, which is activator module. This will be a simple one, just showing how to create a bundle, initializing and terminating it using the bundle activator. 
In this simple Java class, we implement the bundle activator interface. This interface requires two methods, start and stop. The start method is called when our bundle is activated, which takes bundle context as a parameter. This is a crucial component in an OSGI bundle's lifecycle. It provides the bundle with access to the framework and allows it to interact with the OSGI environment allowing it to perform various tasks, such as registering services, accessing other bundles, and managing its own lifecycle. And here, let's print a message, something like hello SGI word, for example, just to make sure that this bundle has been started once we install it on Felix. The stop method is called when our bundle is deactivated, and we can also print out something like goodbye OSGI word. Now, let's see how we configure our bundle using Maven. Here, we define our Maven project with the necessary configurations for building an OSGI bundle. The packaging is set to bundle, indicating that this is an OSGI bundle project. We also specify the parent project and set the source and target Java versions. The critical part is the build section, where we configure the Maven bundle plugin. Let's set a bundle name, bundle version, and most important is the bundle activator, which is our activator class. Now, with our activator class and Maven configuration in place, we can see our bundle when building the project with Maven. And here we can also see the generated manifest file. You can also manually set up your manifest file, but it's more efficient to do this in the POM file and using Maven. OK, let's jump to the service module. This service will be used in the client module, which will have a dependency on it. First, let's create the definition of this service. Basically, creating an interface, we call it product service. And let's make it as simple as possible, so just to return if a product does exist in a set of products. And we create now the implementation of that interface. So we implement the product service interface, and we also need to implement the bundle activator here. Now we need to make this service discoverable by other bundles and especially the client bundle that will be created after this one. So we declare a service registration object of type of our product service class and with the name service registration. This object will now hold information about the registered service. Next we create the bundle activation method. We can also print out something indicating that the service has been started. Here, we create an instance of the product service implementation class, so we will need an instance of it once the service starts. And now we can register the product service implementation with the OSGI framework using the register service method. The method takes the service interface along with the service implementation and additional properties, in this case, null for simplicity. And we can log a statement indicating that the service has been successfully registered. Of course, we also need a bundle deactivation method, and we can also print a unique message here. And before stopping the bundle, we check if the service has been registered, and if registered, we can unregister to remove the service from the framework. And last, we create a method that simulates checking whether a product exists. Let's also make it a simple one so we create a set with some elements. 
but in a real scenario, you would maybe check against a database or some data source. So now the class is ready, and when this bundle starts, it registers an instance of the service with the OSGI framework to be used by other bundles, which is the client. Now before we jump to the client module, let's quickly check the POM file of this module and make sure that we are creating a proper bundle here and exporting the required packages. We also need to set the packaging to bundle. And in the build section, we also set the name of the bundle along with the version. Also the bundle activator, which is the product service implementation class. And last, we export both packages for the interface and its implementation. Let's check the last module, the client. Again, we create the class, implementing the bundle activator class with both methods for starting and stopping. Here, the start method would use the OSGI service registry to discover the product service using a service reference. If the service reference is not null, it means that the product service is available. The client then uses the product service to check if a product, in this case a laptop for example, if this exists. After using the service, it's important to release the service reference using this method, Angus service, to ensure proper resource management. Let's move to the POM file. Also not to forget to set packaging element to bundle. And here the client bundle will depend on the service bundle to use the product service. And we also specify the bundle configurations. So now the client bundle can properly use and interact with the product service provided by the service bundle. Okay, now let's build our project. And now we have the bundles. And we can use Felix to install those bundles. And now we install the bundles. We start with the activator. And after that, we install the service and then we install the client. Now let's start the bundles. We start with the activator. And you can see the message printed out that we are using to identify that this is running. Now we start the service bundle. And after that, we can start the client bundle. And there you have it. We have successfully explored the fundamentals of OSGI development 
using Apache Felix. We explore the life cycle of these components, like how to initialize and terminate OSGI bundles. Also, how OSGI services can be registered and utilized by other bundles. And lastly, how to consume services and interact with the OSGI runtime. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining.